Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our Christmas service this afternoon. I'm going to continue with the series that I've been looking at for the last couple of weeks. Don't worry if you haven't seen the first two, that's okay. This will still make sense on its own. We've been talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. And today we're going to look at the visitors who went to visit Christ after he was born. Last week and in the readings you've had so far, you will have heard about what happened. You've also heard about the shepherds and it's the shepherds that we're going to look at first. Thank you, those children who did the readings. So we've been looking at the promises that were made all the way through the Old Testament. Then last week we looked at how those promises were kept, that God kept every single one of those promises and continues to keep his promises. Today, we're going to talk about how the promises and the news of Jesus' birth were shared with others at the time. So we looked last week at how an angel came to Mary and Mary was told that she was going to have a baby, not by her husband, but the Son of God. We also heard how uh, Mary and her husband Joseph were sent to Bethlehem and they were there to pay taxes and they couldn't have foreseen that that was going to happen but it was all in God's plan. He had promised that his son would be born in Bethlehem. And then we heard about how uh, the baby was born, the Lord Jesus was born in a humble stable and then laid in a manger and how he was perfect, the perfect child who never cried and never did anything wrong because he was the son of God. Seems incredible to think of a baby that never cried, but he didn't sin. He never did any wrong. So how could he have got cross? didn't need to. So this amazing baby was born to Mary. He was truly the son of God. But how do people know? Mary and Joseph didn't have mobile phones. They didn't go out and tell all of the family. Nobody really knew in that area because that wasn't where they lived. People in Nazareth might have been waiting for Mary to have her baby, but they weren't in Nazareth. They were in Bethlehem. So how do people find out that this baby had been born? And not just that, but who this very special baby was. One of the groups of people that we read of was the shepherds. And here we have the shepherds sitting around the fire. It would have been a cold, dark night. It would have been... Uh, very close to Bethlehem, in the hills though, not in Bethlehem itself. And they were looking after the sheep. They wouldn't have locked the sheep away in a barn and left them. They would have been looking after them, watching them, making sure that nothing came to steal those sheep away. They might have been locked away in a pen, but they needed to protect them. This this was their job, this was their livelihood. If any of those sheep went missing, got lost, like just like we learned about not so long ago, it would have cost them dearly and they couldn't afford that. So they were sitting around this fire. And suddenly an angel appeared, just one initially, and spoke to them. The angel told them of the good news, told them that they needed to go to Bethlehem. And then not just one angel, but thousands and thousands of them filled the sky. This is the only time in the Bible that we read of thousands of angels appearing. Sometimes we hear of one, but this time there were so many coming to tell about the baby, about the Lord Jesus Christ, because as I said before, this was no ordinary baby. If somebody has a baby that we know, we don't see angels coming to tell us because this was no ordinary baby. This was the son of God. And these shepherds, they would have known that uh, the son of God was coming at some point. They were Jewish. 
they would have heard about the Messiah, they would have read of those passages that we read a few weeks ago and that we went over last week. They would have known that the whole of the Old Testament tells of how a Messiah, a Saviour, was coming. But I'm sure they never imagined that they would get to see him for themselves. They were just poor working men sitting out in the, in the, in the fields. And the angels came. And the angels said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. They were so happy. The whole, it was like the whole earth was rejoicing because a saviour had come to save human beings. This was his plan. This was what he was going to do. He was going to come and save us. And everyone had been waiting for 6,000 years. And now he was here. And those shepherds, they were amazed. They would have been fearful at first. It was scary to see that angel appear. And then all those thousands of angels filling the sky. But then everyone rejoiced because the Saviour was here. And they quickly, they got up, they left their sheep. Even though those sheep were so important to them, even though it would cost them money if one of those sheep went missing, they got up and they went into Bethlehem. And they found the stable that had the light on and they went and they looked and they saw the baby had arrived. They were guided. They were led to that place. They wouldn't have got up and left that fire if they hadn't been told to. They didn't just know that a baby had been born. They were told, they were guided, and they went. And they worshipped the Lord Jesus. They fell on their knees and they worshipped that Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't just say, oh, how sweet is this baby? They knew that he's the son of God. And so they went and they worshipped him. And I'm sure Mary and Joseph would have told them what happened up until that point. They would have told them about the angel appearing to them and telling them that Mary was going to have the son of God. They would have told them about the journey to Bethlehem and how that completed the promises that had been given in the Old Testament. And those shepherds, when they went on their way, they were rejoicing. They were probably singing. They were telling everybody. They couldn't hold this to themselves. It was so exciting. Just like when we've got the best present and we want everybody to know. We want our family to know. We want our friends to know. But this was so much bigger. This was the Son of God coming. And they went, and they went back to that field, went back to their sheep. I'm sure those sheep had been kept safe for them because they were told by God, from the, that message from the angels was from God to go and see. And so they did. They went and they saw the Lord Jesus and they fell on their faces, on their knees, and they worshipped him. They knew that this was the saviour. There's another group of people that we talk of at Christmas time too, isn't there? Another group of people that went to see the Lord Jesus. This time, he wasn't quite so small because these men, they travelled a great long distance. Why did they travel? Well, they followed a star. They saw a star up in the sky and they knew that this star was such an unusual star. This was a star that was telling them something amazing. These men would have studied the stars all their lives. They knew which one was which. They knew the patterns they made. And that's how they knew that this one was special. And this one was telling them many things. They also would have studied the prophecies themselves. These men came from a country near to where Daniel was. And they would have heard what Daniel had said about um, what the Jewish people believed. 
the Old Testament would have been brought with to Daniel when he came away from Jerusalem. And these men, they knew that a Messiah was coming. And when they saw this star, they knew that he had come. But they had to travel a really long way. They lived a far, far distance from Jerusalem and from Bethlehem. They lived in the east and they had to travel. So by the time they reached the Lord Jesus, he was just a little boy. He was somewhere between one and two years old, probably, certainly less than two years old. But he wasn't a tiny baby anymore. But Mary and Joseph were still in Bethlehem. They were still living there. And these men, they gathered together gifts, expensive things, things that you would give to a king when a king was born. And they went off on a long, long journey following that star. That star took them to Israel, took them to the land where Bethlehem was. And the capital city was Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, There was a king, and the king heard of their journey. They came to see him and told them what they were doing. And he said, there's no baby born here. So this was a king that wasn't to be born in the palace. We know, don't we, he was born in a stable. He was born in a stable in Bethlehem. But these men, they went looking for him in the palace at first. And Herod, the king, told them, There's no baby here. But he did say to them, when you find the baby, when you find this king, tell me of him so that I can come and worship him too. So Herod told them that he wanted to worship the Lord Jesus too. And these three men, these three wise, wise men, sometimes they're called kings. These men These three with the three gifts, but also probably many, many more, not just three people. And they travelled and they went to Bethlehem and they found the Lord Jesus. In this building, underneath a star, they actually went to a house, not a stable, it says in the Bible. But they did the same as the shepherds. They fell down and they worshipped him. They found him and his mother in the house. Maybe Joseph was there too, but we hear in the Bible that Mary and uh, the Lord Jesus were there. And they again, they worshipped him because they knew this was the Son of God. This was the Saviour. Both groups knew the promises. They trusted them. They knew that this was proof that they'd been kept. And they worshipped the Lord Jesus. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So they followed this star. They were guided by a star. So first we had the shepherds. They were guided by an angel. Then we had the wise men. They were guided by a star. These two groups of people who came to worship the Lord Jesus when he was born. There was one more person that we've just spoken of as well, and that was the king, Herod. He doesn't look like a nice man, does he? That's because he wasn't. This king, he said to the wise men that he was going to uh, come and worship the Lord Jesus as well. But he didn't. Instead, He sent out a declaration across the land and he insisted that all of the boys that were born that were under two, that's how we know the Lord Jesus was under two, he insisted that they be killed, every single one of them, because he was the king. And kings have children who become kings, don't they? And he was so jealous that another king had been born that he decided that he had to kill him. And he was responsible for the deaths of so many babies, so many little boys, but not the Lord Jesus, because somebody else was guided. Joseph had a dream, and in that dream, an angel told him, don't 
stay here. It's not safe. Herod wants to kill all of the boys. And so they fled to Egypt. The angel said, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And again, that fulfills a prophecy from the Old Testament. This wasn't one that we specifically looked at. But if you read Matthew 2 and Luke 2, it gives the whole account and how those promises, how those prophecies have been kept. So Joseph was also guided. We had the shepherds being guided by an angel. They actually saw the angel, didn't they? While they were wide awake. What an amazing sight. And then we had the kings. They were guided by a star. And Joseph was guided by an angel in a dream. Other people in the Bible have been guided by dreams, haven't they? Joseph had dreams and he was guided by the Lord in those. But we're not guided in dreams anymore, or by angels, or by stars. Those were special events that specifically happened at Christmas time, the time that we celebrate as Christmas time, because the Lord Jesus was born, the Saviour, the Christ was born, and these people were to go out and tell everybody the Christ has been born. The Messiah has come. The Saviour has come into the world. This wasn't a secret. This was shared with everybody. Some would have believed, but not everybody, unfortunately. Not everybody, even those who saw him, not everybody believed. But we're told in the Bible, and the Bible is what guides us too. Maybe you've got tricky decisions to make. We all have decisions sometimes, don't we? Sometimes they're little choices. Do I do that one thing or that other thing? Do I make that decision or that decision? But other times they're huge things. Which school am I going to go to next? What am I going to do in this particular situation? What career shall I go into? Is this a good friend to have? Is this a good path to be going down? But every single one of those things that we worry about, whether they're things I've put there or anything else, all of them we are guided in by God if we ask him to. How are we guided now? Well, as I said, not in dreams, not by angels, not by a star. We don't need those things anymore. We've got the complete word of God now. We are guided through his word through the Bible. We've got the Old Testament. We've got all of what happened while Christ was on this this earth at the beginning of the New Testament and more. We've got what happened afterwards. We've got letters from Paul who also saw the Lord Jesus, but later. And then we've got all of the books all the way to Revelations. And then the Bible was complete. And because the Bible was complete with those books in that Bible that we can hold with our hands and read over and over, because it's complete, we don't need dreams anymore. We don't need stars or angels to come to us. We're guided through the Bible, through the words being put into our minds and our hearts, through doors being opened and doors being closed. So when you go and look at a school and you don't get in, well, that's the door closed. You've prayed about it. You've asked God to guide you. If you're not meant to be there, that door can close. Or maybe a door will open that you don't even think is going to happen. Something suddenly is offered to you and you think, well, I wasn't expecting that, but it suddenly seems so easy. That's often God's way of leading us too in ways that we just don't imagine and we know can't be down to what we're doing because they're so unique and so different. So we are led through reading the words of God, through remembering them, through praying, through asking for help and reading his words. You, that's the Lord Jesus, the Lord God, 
will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Because, of course, that's the most important way that we are guided. That's the most important news. Another word for the good news is the gospel. That's a word I'm sure you're familiar with. It's when we tell people about how God came and he suffered and he died so that we could be converted, so that we could go to be with him, so that we could be his people, the ones that he guides and he loves. And eventually he will lift up and be with him in heaven for the whole of eternity. Not because we've done anything right, not because we're good, not because we've tried hard, but because he loved us and because we asked him to. You might remember that verse that I showed you last week. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. God keeps his promises. That's what I want you to remember at this Christmas time. Every time you hear a Christmas carol that speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ, every time you see the lights, think of the star and how the the kings, the wise men were guided. But remember, most of all, that this baby that was born was the Son of God, our Saviour, and he came not just to fill us with joy, because of course it's a very joyous time, not just that we could spend time with our families and open presents, but because he came to save us. Another time we'll talk some more about how he did that and what he did. But we know he died on the cross. We know that when he died, he took our punishment. He took away our sins so that he can lift us up to be in heaven with him. And I'm going to leave you with this last verse before Pastor prays for us. Therefore, do not worry saying what we shall eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. That's anyone that doesn't believe in Christ. They worry about what we shall eat and what we shall drink and what we shall wear. But your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. At this time of year, think of God and think of what he has done for us.